Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, it's Belle. This is gonna be part two of my spooky fall Halloween time recommendations. I think this one will be mostly ghost type story. So I hope you enjoy. So to start off with, we're gonna have the queen of historical fiction, Emma Carroll. And this was the first book I read of hers. It's Frost Hollow Hall. And it's a spooky ghost story. There's a manor, mansion, that's spooky. Everything about it's just eerie and she's just such an atmospheric writer. The things we find out about what happened and everything that goes on at the manor and Tilly's own story and everything. It's just, it's really, it's creepy, it's eerie, it's beautiful. She's just an amazing storyteller and I highly recommend this one. It's, so amazing. it's a great uh, ghost story. We have Evie's Ghost by Helen Peters. This is modern day and historical fiction in one because the girl is from this time and it's kind of like time travel too in a way because she goes back in time. The whole backstory of the house and the family that lived there and the reason why she's back in time and even her fellow chambermaids. Like, all of their stories are so good. It always amazes me how orphans, especially girls, were treated. It's just so crazy how kids were treated, but I just love this. Another beautifully creepy story, uh, amazing storyteller. I think I have one other book by this author and I can't wait to read it because I really was impressed by her writing and I love this. Next we have two books by Lindsay Curry, A Peculiar Incident on Shady Street and Scratch I'd read first, but I recently read Peculiar Incident on Shady Street, which was her debut novel, I believe. And I loved them both. I may have even loved Shady Street even more. They're both ghost stories. In the peculiar incident, Tessa is miserable. She was not happy leaving her sunny home in Florida with all of her friends to move to rainy Chicago where she knows no one. What's even weirder is the house they move into. She hears strange things. The paintings, the art on the wall does strange things. Her paintings, her drawings do strange things. Flickering lights, crackling noises. She begins to realize that somebody's trying to communicate with her. and. So she tries to figure out a hundred year old secret and as usual find justice for a ghost or a situation that happened. On her first exploration outside her neighborhood she meets a boy and becomes fast friends and then in an extension his friends become her friends and the friendship that grows between them is just great and I loved it. It was a great friendship and they do this adventure together and they she tells them about the haunting type situation and brings them over and they get to experience a little bit of that for themselves. And her little baby brother has a ventriloquist doll that the haunting also affects a little bit and I don't think there's anything creepier than a ventriloquist doll that is coming to life, so that's in there. So with their help, she begins unraveling the mystery of what happened in this house and who it happened to. And just them unraveling the mystery and bit by bit is revealed. It's just so intriguing and engrossing flew through this. In Scratch Scratch we have Claire who has no interest in the paranormal. She's a scientist and believes only in facts. Her dad, however, is all about all things paranormal. <laughs> he wrote a book. He has a tour bus that he does of haunting haunted places in Chicago. But she's totally embarrassed by her dad. <laughs> and the last thing she wants to do is help him on one of his ghost themed bus tours but she ends up having to. She thinks she's made it through the night when she sees a boy at the back of the bus dressed in old fashioned clothes with dark eyes and a sad face, especially when she goes to check the back of the bus at the end of the tour and he's gone. She brushes it off because she's a scientist, thinks there's nothing weird about it, can't be, maybe she just didn't see him get off. But that's when the scratches start. <laughs> scratches like in the walls, like she just hears scratching and voices whispering to her and the number 369 starts appearing everywhere. And it turns out the boy from the bus is following her and he won't stop until she figures out what he wants. And she needs to figure it out before it's too late. It was just so good. That scratching creeped me out so bad. <laughs> but what I loved about this also, she likes to put real facts in there so you learn about some of Chicago's tragedies, some of the actual most haunted places and some things that happen that are in like the museums but like in the story it doesn't get as much attention it's like pushed to the back but it, she brings light to them and I did a lot I love facts and history and 
anything I can research. So I looked up a lot of these things and it's just so interesting. So I highly recommend these and looking up the things she mentions in the book too to see what really happened and these are great and I highly recommend them. And we have The Year of Shadows by Clara Legrand. Love her writing. It's really it's so good. And we have a cat in this as you can see. And I love that. Love my middle grade cats. This story was spooky. It's a ghost story. And the backstory and everything that she has to do, the character, it was so creative and unique and intriguing. And then there's the underlying messages that go along with it. And there's an important story that she's dealing with and struggling with. And there's grief. She lost her mom. It's just her and her dad. And she has all this anger towards her dad. She's just really angry at him. And I think she blames him in a way because he always put his music first. He's a maestro and he's not doing well financially. So he moves them into a broken down music hall that's falling apart. But he's doing it to save money, plus he can't afford much else. And her only friend is Igor, her ornery stray cat. Here's when she thinks her life can't get any weirder or more complicated. She meets four ghosts that haunt the music hall. And if it, the hall is torn down, they'll be stuck as ghosts forever. But to save her new ghost friend, she has to save the hall. I was on a quest to do this with one of her living friends that she's met through the music hall. And he's amazing. But helping the dead has consequences for the li living, and soon not just the hall needs saving. And she learns things while she's snooping and where her dad sleeps and learns more things about her mom and we get to see the lives of these ghosts because they don't really remember their lives until they're getting helped and then you see it played out and the way that she gets to help them and even her friend he's, he helps too because it's, it's draining so it's hard for her to do so she he helps her. The process of which she helps is fascinating and seeing that come together and what they experience while they're helping the ghosts, it's just amazing. I loved it. It's so good. So it's creepy, it's spooky, it's beautiful. There's amazing themes and messages. It's just all the great st stuff with the middle grade wrapped in to one, including the cat. <laughs> so I really recommend this. And there's illustrations sprinkled throughout too. We have Midnight at the Barclay Hotel by Flower Bradley. I say I'm not first name totally wrong. Another haunted hotel story, which I love, and a great group of friends. Jay has convinced his mom to accept an all expenses paid trip to um, a getaway at the at the Barclay Hotel. He never expects he would find a murder mystery there. He's obsessed with ghosts and even has ghost hunting equipment. He actually wanted to go there because it's the most haunted spot in town and he wanted to use his equipment hoping to like see a ghost. He didn't expect happen what happened when he gets there. When he gets there, his mother is one of the people blamed for the hotel owner's death, as are the other guests there. It's kind of like a whodunit or a clue, if you will. Like all these people all have motive. Who did it? I love stuff like that. It's like a puzzle. So with his new friends he meets at the hotel, Penny and Emma, he sets out to track down the killer and clear his mother's name and hopefully see a ghost or two. It's just such a cute story. Cute, but not too cute, if that makes any sense. It's got all the spooky feels, the atmospheric feels of the hotel. You don't know who did it. Like, I was guessing until the end, and I thought I had it figured out, and I really didn't. And the twists are great. So I really recommend this great ghost story in a creepy hotel. And another one with illustrations throughout, sprinkled throughout too. Another little more lighthearted ghost story, another hotel, haunted hotel, is the second best haunted hotel on Mercer Street by Corey Putman. Oops. Oh, I love this. All the ghosts, like you see on the cover when you get to know who they are, they are so good. They're like the best side characters, the ghosts themselves. So everything's mystery, the ghosts, characters in this make it the best. Just a really great heartwarming story. Some great themes and messages. And of course, full of ghosts and spooky hotels. And a mystery to solve. And also great illustrations throughout. So yeah, highly recommend that one. Now we have Ghost Squad by Clara Bell A. Ortega. I love this. And then of course, another MG cat. And I'll just read you the flap of this one. Loosely, Luna. Ghosts are more than just the family business. Shortly before Halloween, so also Halloween time for this one, so even more perfect. She and her best friend Sid cast a spell that accidentally awakens malicious spirits wreaking havoc throughout their hometown of St. Augustine, Florida. Together they must join forces with Sid's witch grandmother, Babette, 
and her tubby tabby chunk to fight the haunting head on and reverse the curse to save the town and her firefly spirits before it's too late. With the family dynamics of Coco and the action packed adventures of Ghostbusters, Clarabelle A. Ortega delivers both a thrillingly spooky and delightfully sweet debut novel. And the cat chunk is named after the chunk from the Goonies, which is perfect. I love the Goonies and I love Chunk. You guys! So it's so good. And the fireflies as her relatives and the tree that they all live in. Her relatives as the fireflies, the ghost, and her trying to save them. And her and her friend, Sid, and Babette, the witch. I love this. This is a great ghost story. And set at Halloween. These are just amazing characters. I highly recommend. Very atmospheric. Great characters. Great, great everything. The backstory, the mystery, everything. Now we have The Spirit of Cattail County by Victoria... I am tech. This is a beautiful story about a girl who's a little bit different, a little bit of an outcast, doesn't have many friends, except for a boy who's a ghost who's been there for as long as she can remember. Her mom has just died and her awful aunt is now living with her and talking about moving her away from this home, the only home she's ever known in this house that she loves. Um, on the marsh, I think it is. With its lyrical prose, loving depiction of small town southern life, and characters who feel like old friends, this magical debut will enchant you, dazzle you, and make you feel at home. It really does. And the small town southern part is right on point. <laughs> I loved it. I could hear them talking in my head and it made me feel like I was back home. It's, she's just a southern girl, true and true. And all these characters are great. The little fortune teller girl, she was so amazing. Sparrow herself is just a, such a great main character. And you're rooting for her the whole way. She just wants to see her mama one more time. And of course, if she has the boy that's always been there who's a ghost, why couldn't her mama come back as a ghost? Themes of grief, friendship, family, and everything that she uncovers, not just about her own family and life, but about the boy and the town. It's just a great mystery. It's just a great story in general. I highly recommend it. This book. <laughs> I remember absolutely being obsessed after I read <laughs> I wanted more from this author. It's Eleanor Alice and the Roosevelt Ghost by Diane K. Saller Salerny. It's like an alternate history, alternate reality story of like a young Eleanor Roosevelt. And there's alternating chapters between her and her cousin. They're both totally different from each other. And this is in 1898 New York, and ghosts live among humans. Some, most are harmless, but some are even capable of murder. And so this is another one. I'll read the flap because I just love this book so much. After an unusual spirit takes up resident residence at the Roosevelt house, Eleanor and her cousin Alice grow suspicious. The girls don't get along, but they know something is not right. The ghost is more than a pesky nuisance. It's almost like he wants to scare the Roosevelts out of their home, and no one seems to care. Meanwhile, the girls discover a dangerous ghost in the house where Alice was born. Is someone else haunting the family? Introverted Eleanor and boisterous Alice develop an unlikely friendship as they explore their family's dark, complicated history. It's up to them to unearth buried secrets and destroy both ghosts. Told from dual perspectives, thrills and chills around abound in a imaginative novel that puts a supernatural spin on alternate history. It's so good. <laughs> Mystery of the ghost haunting the house, and then also the ghost in the house that Alice was born in. The whole story behind that and everything is phenomenal. Their friendship that grows after not getting along for so long. Backstory of all that. The backstory of everything is just fascinating. I absolutely love this. I read this so fast. I could not put it down. I had to keep knowing. It just got more and more intense and suspenseful. And she's just a really great storyteller of all things spooky it seems and I really need more middle grade from her but I really highly 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 recommend this one. Next we have a series Ghost Hunters by Susan McCauley. The author had sent me the first two books and I loved them I was obsessed with them and then she recently sent me the third one what just came out at the beginning of the month and it was just as great if not better than the first two. This is another alternate world where ghosts live among us once an athlete and popular kid, Alex is in a terrible car accident that severely injures his hip and leaves him with a rare power. He can hear and see ghosts. All Alex wants to be is normal. When a malevolent spirit begins haunting him, Alex must accept his unwanted psychic powers and work with his best friend, his paranormal investigator cousin, and two friendly spirits to solve the mystery of the bones in the wall and put the vicious ghost to rest. If he fails, he'll lose his family and friends to a gruesome fate. 
and the whole backstory of how ghosts came to be a hundred years ago and how they got brought out it's just all fascinating and there's even a glossary in the back with the words used everything in here i feel like you don't know and you need a quick reminder after it's explained the seal of solomon like they have these seals they put up all over everything to protect like even tvs have to have a bunch of seals on them and computers or the ghost can come through the wires and everybody is when after they're born they get a it's like i think it's a seal of solomon on a tattoo on the back of their necks for protection but the psychics get even more tattoos for protection um, since they have to deal with more spirits. Each story is just amazing and deals with different things. The first one is the bones that they find in the house and the wall and the more the stories go on, the friendships just become even more incredible and character growth is amazing and Alex comes more and more into his powers and training and who he's training with. And the second story involves pirates. They used to live, this is in New Orleans too, which is a great atmosphere for this season. And I love that. And then the third one is from something that happened a hundred years, hundreds of years ago and the wrongs that were done and trying to figure that out and help. And, and now we have a whole new mystery that we still don't know who's behind that, who helped these spirits become more powerful in the third book. And I just can't wait for more. This is a really great series, great ghost series, a great alternate world, world very detailed and atmospheric and just creative and it's just really genius how she's put it all together and all these things she's come up with and put in here. And the characters are so amazing. I love them. I love the series and I highly recommend it. This is one of my favorites. Well, so far. The third book just came out and I haven't read it yet, but I'm planning to very, very soon. The first two books were incredible though. This is my type of series, I'll tell you. It's a school setting. It's a creepy school. It used to be like this rich family's home, like a manor. It got turned into a school and it's haunted. This is just engrossing. There's a, the whole mystery behind the school, the ghost. All of it is great. He's just a great storyteller. He's also the author of Night Books, which just came adaptation on Netflix too, which was just as great as the book. They didn't change hardly anything, I don't think, and it was just, it was so good. But this, the haunting school that used to be a mansion, the, the whole backstories. Backstories are always so fascinating. It's just very engrossing. You just, I devoured the first two books. And then the story in the second book was even more like in, intriguing and you, I just ate it up. I cannot wait to see. I think the third book is the last book. I can't wait to see how he wraps this all up and puts it together. So I highly recommend these. Next we have Karma Moon Ghost Hunter by Melissa Savage. I freaking love this book. There are many types of humor that are my type of humor because I can say that about a lot of books and the humor will be completely different than the other one I said it about but it's it's just true. They're just like dry humor that's I don't, it's just so funny. The banter between Karma and her best friend in here is so funny and there's great underlying messages in here too of course. So yeah she has very big anxiety. She calls it what ifs. And it's her anxiety, which is very extreme and intense. Like, what if this happens? What if that happens? And it just spirals out of control. And it got worse, even worse, when her mom left and moved. And her mom's acting basically like a teenager, and she's horrible. This hotel is actually a real hotel, and I think it's the hotel that, that The Shining was based on. I can't remember if it was filmed there, too, the movie. But So it's like a real haunted place, and the whole story and the the boy and what he comes up with what, what he says about the hotel and I think it was Houdini and all of it all the characters that live in the hotel and everything they discover like I said the banter the humor and the messages of anxiety and parent abandonment of her mom and her growth through this book is incredible and the ending was epic and the way it ended I really hope like what came out when they we're all sitting around. I really hope there will be more to come. I hope they got that season two and the season two will be a book too. So I highly recommend this. We have The Haunting of Aveline Jones by Phil Hicks. Book two just came out. I'm still waiting on mine to get here. I did order it and I'm really excited to read it. This was a really spooky ghost story. Whole, everything's atmospheric. Like the cover, <laughs> the writing, the setting, like that little town and the local legend they have and the superstitions that they have around this time pretty quick read but it's no less terrifying <laughs> like this ghost thing is spooky in this one like in the little bookshop I loved it and her friend that she makes and the house she's staying in and 
the town's history and why this ghost, why it's happening. It's just, oh, I loved it. I read this so fast. Not just because it's a shorter read, but it didn't need to be longer. Like, it's not one of those short books that, I mean, I wish it was longer because I was enjoying it so much, but it wasn't one where you say, I wish it had been longer. It could have benefited from more. No, he, he managed to fit it all in there and terrify you at the same time. You got all the details you needed. It was all fascinating. I just loved it. It was superb, and I cannot wait to get the second book so I can read it. So that's the next one, and I cannot wait to get it. So I highly recommend that. And I think that's all the ghost-focused books. Alright, this one got a little long, so that'll be all the ghost re recommendations. And then in, the, in part three and final of the spooky recommendations will be witch books, and then the other books with monsters and any other thing I couldn't nail down category-wise, but no less spooky. So I hope you enjoyed part two, and I hope you found some good recommendations. And all the illustrators will be listed below, like always. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.